Okay, so for your first learn together, what I'm gonna do is create this video to walk you through the concepts of what you need to do here. I'm not gonna give a video ex uh, instruction on how I've done my code. Um, by the time you've gotten in here, I will have uh, done my version of the code and given a link, at least for review, but do know, and let me actually do this while you're here with me. Actually, I will edit this. Now, this is not a button you see, but I just want you to know, right? So users must post before seeing replies. And the idea here is what I'm reinforcing in this concept of learning to code based on someone's requirements or somebody telling you, I want code that does the following. Now, this is what you see Andrew doing in the course, and I'm sure by now, and I'm sure I've said this in week one, is that it's really important that when you have code challenges that he's doing, that you really do take the time to um, attempt to write code. Because if you rush into just watching somebody do it without giving your brain that time and your muscle memory that time to do it, it can be a, a bit more challenging when you come to have to write your own code like this. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Now that we've learned some really critical um, programming concepts of creating variables, what are booleans and how do we do comparison, if and if else uh, code blocks and the scope of variables. And I've summarized them here, but as you've already experienced, there was quite a bit of content, especially towards the end where he talks about variable scope. So I want you to do this. Given the things that we've learned, I want you to think of something you make a decision on in a, on a daily basis or fairly routine. Okay, it doesn't absolutely have to be daily, but it's giving you a, the idea of what I'm looking for. Okay, and then what I want you to do is write code that actually implements that uh, decision to the best of your ability. Like some decisions obviously have a lot more things that you consider, but now that we've learned, right, how to set variables, how to do uh, booleans, and again, I'm not gonna go through the list, you get it, I believe. And if you don't, this is a perfect time to reach out or come see me. I want you to write code, right, that actually runs and reflects to the best of your ability that decision-making process that you use. Now, I can imagine, like I was just sitting here before I recorded this and I thought about all the things, all the little decisions I make in a day that sometimes I have to think about consciously for an assignment like this, right? They don't have to be elaborate decisions. Like one I was thinking about was like what I have for lunch and what I have for lunch partly depends on what I had for breakfast and what time of the day it is and what my goals are for the day. So there's actually quite a bit of uh, thinking and decision-making that goes into that. So that may be what I end up writing. I actually have not written code for this yet. Okay, uh, but I've come up with the, what I want us to do. And again, I'm gonna give you the requirements. I want you to attempt to write the code and then I want you to share and I'll show you at the end how to actually share this because this is gonna be a little different in the respect that it's gonna be in your public repo. All the stuff you've done up until this point has been in your private repo only between you and I, but now you're actually gonna work inside of your um, public repo, which is you and all of us in the class, okay? So I want you to write code that does that. Again, the better you document this, not only is it better for you, but it helps your fellow students who sh need to be looking at other people's code once they've written their own, because it's the ability to read and write code that can really improve your proficiency. So how do I grade this, right? I grade is did you use 90% of what we learned, right? Um, to do your own code, right? And sorry, this I don't wanna glaze over this. Did you write your own code? Now, this one's a little more challenging for me to tell. Over time, it becomes easier because I get to know your code writing style. And really, this is where I know uh, so based on the amount of code that's out on the web, it's fairly easy to go look at code and it's not a problem to be inspired by code, but you really wanna write your own, okay? So this is the bulk of the points of this assignment. And then when you do do your reply, 
uh, to this to this discussion board and you provide your link, right? You have to reply to two fellow students and give us some thoughts on this assignment for you. Okay, I do accept late work. Uh, it is discounted 25%. Um, so it comes down to 25% discount is 75% possible. So then I will look at your grade, not from 100 points, but starting at 75 so that that's how I will grade it. I just want you to know, okay? All right, so again, I'm not going to go over my code example because quite frankly, I haven't written it yet and I will do that by the time you get here. But also uh, know that you won't see other people's reply until you hit reply and post your own link. That's the idea. And then uh, I will, if requested, and I generally do this for sure because most students want some a little more instruction. On my code example, I will go over it with a short video to give you that input. Okay, so what I'm going to do is for just a second, I'm going to move over to my VS Code and I'm in my public repo and I, I just have a little bit of cleanup work I'm going to show you because I realized and I'm actually changing over to my Mac today for a lot of reasons besides, well, just a lot of reasons. And one of the things I noticed is that my git ignore was still that uh, default one. So I'm just going to take, go into my uh, private one, open up that git ignore, sorry, in my private directory my private repo, there it is. I'm just gonna grab this. Now, why am I doing this with you on here? Well, mostly, honestly, because I didn't do it in there. And I just want you to know how simple, paste that in. Oh, did I do that right? I love it when I talk about something and then I don't do it. Paste, there we go, there we go. Now, the other reason I'm showing you this is that the git ignore is a little different in this respect. Let me just go ahead and close those files. I do have uh, autosave set up and I am in the public, uh, private, so I'm gonna switch over, open an integrated terminal. And in this case, you know, we've been working in subdirectories over in the private repo. So we're moving now to uh, our public repo that we can, we're, not, we're gonna create a couple of uh, direct, or one directory here for today. I'm actually considering changing the way I'm doing this in the future, but for today, this is fine. And then I'd open that, and let me go ahead, I should have done this before, but add made this a little bigger. Okay, so in here, um, I do have this one, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do git add, and in this case, because it's the git ignore, it actually wants you to get commit, um, updating. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and push that. So that's the workflow that I've been talking about and hopefully you're learning and I'll just clear. So now I'm going to just roll up the private one because for this assignment we're working in the public one and I'm going to go ahead, I'm not going to create a file yet, I'm actually going to create a new folder. You know, we created new folders for the um, Bootcamp, so I'm going to have you create one called W1, and you can use lowercase here. Okay, now in W1, you're going to create um, some kind of, and I'm not going to dictate the file name here, but you know, daily JS would make sense. Okay, and then I, you would be writing code in here uh, to right, right to uh, review requirements in Canvas. Or again, if I wanted to flip over, that meet this, okay? That is a daily decision that reflects your decision-making process utilizing the concepts that we've learned. Okay, so A, I was just kind of walking you through a little bit of cleanup work I did. I created the folder, and now I can actually use that git add star. And the reason you might want to do that is if you have multiple files. Now for today, we don't. And I think starting next week, I'll probably show you just how to use the browser. It kind of makes more sense to write JavaScript in the browser um, because the sooner I think the better. Good. So instead of just doing git at, now by the way, notice here, if I do ls, my current directory in the terminal is actually at the root of um, my public. And I didn't actually have to be in the directory called week one. Okay, 
uh, to do the git add star. Uh, that is one difference between doing the git version control on um, the git ignore versus other things. But I can do git status, and I probably should have done it before this, so I have added it. Git, git commit dash m. Now this would be learn together week on code. Now, again, I don't have code in here. I'm just showing you the setup, and I'll note git push. And while this is doing it, I'm going to move over. I'm going to come over here to GitHub. And the reason I'm showing you this part is so that you'll know how to create the provide the link. Okay, so in this case, we are working, as I've said a couple times now, in the public so that when you provide the links in Canvas from here, everyone can see them. And then what you can do here is you can just click here, and then if you notice the URL, uh, copy that, come, come back. So, because what you're going to do is you're going to create a link in Canvas, an href, that's the code that's actually underneath it. Okay, and if you hit reply, you can just say something like, my example. Okay, now I like to do a little formatting because it just kind of makes sense to give that a heading. Right now, you need to write something here, right? This is where you need to write a little something about your experience, and then you provide your link. So my code, let's scroll up here. I'm going to select the, the words itself, and there is a link over here, a hyperlink. So this is a WYSIWYG editor, and what this is going to do is basically allow you to, without writing code, to just create code. Let me just show you. Paste that in. Good. Now what happens here, and you can actually do, this is a new thing I've noticed too, is you can provide, you can change it here if you want to. But one of the things as web um, developers you should know, and I'm going to come down here to the bottom, and I'm actually going to change, and I'm going to, it's a toggle. So you look at what you've written here, and notice this is the HTML. Hopefully all of you have some HTML. If you don't, You'll get a little here. If not, consider taking my 82 class. So what this shows you, it's an A, okay, A tag. And in this case, right, it actually has, I'm looking at it too, it's generally an A, what we call an A ref tag. Uh, it's got a class on it. Oh, there's the ref right there. I was looking for this. Okay, but this, if we shorthanded this, it wouldn't have the class in here. This is a little more detailed than you may or may not want. I just want you to know, but if you ever give a wrong link and rather than to redo it, you could just come down here and write the code because this is really what, as web developers, you want to learn to do over time. Target blank basically says open in a new tab here. So I just want you to know how to get down to that code and you can come back here and then when you're ready, hit post. Now I'm again, not going to do this. Remember again, once you hit post, uh, then you will see other people, other students, most likely, uh, you may actually be the first. If so, congratulations, right? So, and the idea is again, write your own code meets these requirements, right? Once you post your link, then reply to two of your fellow students with your thoughtful input or something and something about your experience, right? And then um, that's it, right? So that's what, you, and you can't do, of course, your replies until you post your own code. I hope that helps you understand this particular assignment because I know it's your first learn together. And in this case, we're doing something uh, a little different because I'm giving you a, a lot more f uh, freedom f to write uh, particular kinds of code, but I am giving you requirements. So I will chat with you later. Bye.